All right, X-Men Fantastic Four, number two. I've been looking forward to this one since the last video I did on the, uh, the first issue. And uh, you thought I didn't like the Fantastic Four last time. They were really out of order this time. Last issue, we saw Xavier and the whole crew show up to invite Franklin Richard, son of Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman, to Krakoa. Chaos ensued. They fought an FF. Look like really crappy people as usual, but uh, in the end, Franklin and Valeria, his little sister, they ran off to stow away on Kitty's pirate ship, which was hijacked by Doctor Doom. So that's where we pick up here. The kids are missing. The FF calls up the X Men to demand they return the kids, flat out accusing them of kidnapping, which actually is not beyond the pale because, as I mentioned last time. I don't know if you guys are reading X-Force. I mean, these dudes are straight American people. So believing them capable of kidnapping people isn't so wrong here. Anyway, but Sue is still awful as usual. She goes off on Cyclops when he tells her they wouldn't kidnap Valeria because she's human. And she's like, how dare you not want to kidnap my daughter? You know, be glad you crazy kook. And, and now she's mad they don't want both kids. Then she destroys her own stuff. You know, hey, uh, Psycho Sue, that's your communication device, crazy ass. Reed's just gonna have to rebuild it later, I guess. Next, she goes off on a rant, declaring that the X-Men are buying off the world. You know, Sue, is, is Wakanda buying off the world by leveraging vibranium? I mean, all nations export something they have, and if other nations need or want it, they buy it. They leverage it to their advantage as best they can, but uh, whatever. Not the mutants. When the mutants do it, it's wrong. And her next bit of Sue wisdom, her next uh, nugget, is declaring that the X-Men aren't heroes anymore. Well, which they kind of aren't at this point. I guess I can give her that. That doesn't change the fact that they're still better than her. She's awful. And remember, she's only the second worst. The worst one of all is Reed, who has... The ability, I mean, truly has the ability to help everyone on Earth with his mind, but doesn't because he wants to explore the negative zone. And who wouldn't? I mean, <laughs> well, of all people, couldn't he help the X-Men with the killer mutant robots that keep coming? Couldn't he figure that out? But clearly he doesn't want to. Oh, well. Anyway, after this, the, the FF decide we're going to go to Krakoa invade the sovereign nation that's fine whatever fantastic four you can you guys can do whatever you want <laughs> so anyway we get this obligatory dr doom welcoming guests at the dinner table scene it seems to happen all the time whenever somebody comes they end up at the dinner table with dr doom this kind of happened when uh the x-men first met dr doom way back in like uncanny x-men 145 or 6 or something i will uh, i'll try to find the panel but uh, from what I understand, John Byrne didn't really appreciate Chris Claremont doing that since he had just left the X-Men to go write Fantastic Four. And then he retconned it later so that the X-Men really only faced a Doombot in that story, not the real deal. But that's whatever, because the real action is going down on Krakoa. The X-Men are trying to track down Kitty. And as they discuss the likelihood that the Fantastic Four will invade the island, they realize that those sneaky mofos are probably already there, which of course they are. And then what's revealed, the Fantastic Four just attack. They just flat out attack when there is absolutely no need to do so, none. They could have revealed themselves immediately after discovering the X-Men didn't actually have their kids, which they found out because they were listening to their conversation. They should have apologized for accusing them of kidnapping and for invading a sovereign nation. Just terrible, terrible people. And uh, it's like, yeah, this is a comic. There has to be some action. But this isn't even a misunderstanding. They just attacked, even knowing the X-Men weren't holding their kids. They should have been more careful in these situations. And by, by them, I mean like the writers, because the FF look really bad here. And I mean, to give them a break, I would have made it so the FF tried to get in and out stealthily but once discovered have like magneto or somebody else just outright attack which they would have been in their rights to do because they were invaded and, and then it turned into a fight really all magneto did was reveal the fantastic four with some 
particulate debris that landed on everybody. But no, the thing just attacks Magneto, just punches him. Magneto's always the one they, they attack first. And as soon as Sue is disabled, the Fantastic Four take off and run like punks. Because without Sue, they're massively underpowered. And the X-Men proceed to just swarm on him like ants. And something that made me really mad was Nightcrawler punches out Reed and then apologizes as he's punching him out for some reason. And Reed, of all people, should be afforded absolutely zero respect. Like, way too nice on Kurt's part, but Kurt is a nice character. Then the thing yells out, Hey, will you crumb bums let us go look for our kids? What? You just invaded a sovereign nation. They're not letting you go. And, but even so, Colossus comes up and says, hey, Ben, you don't have to do this. And Ben says, yeah, I do. And then punches out Colossus. You know, what an a-hole. Really incredible. And, re and remember, Ben, is he's, he's the best of these kooks, the best of these clowns. But he's really an a-hole here. That's why the best part of the fight is when Wolverine manages to claw the thing. And, you know, he deserved it at this point. And I, I was kind of glad he got put to the claw. But it didn't have to go down this way. And Cyclops really bent over backwards to accommodate the Fantastic Four. Try to appease them. And this is what they get. Attacked by humans, again, for something beyond their control. So finally, the, uh, the Fantastic Four leave the island that they just invaded. And uh, Xavier tells Cyclops that they're going to have to explain to the FF how things are now. And it sounds kind of ominous, especially since Xavier won't take that damn helmet off. But uh, I was cool with it. And um, I kind of wish I'll be able to see the FF beaten up by the X-Men, but I, I, I really don't think that's going to happen. Anyway, then back to Kitty's situation with Doom. She makes some sort of treaty or something with Doom, but of course Doom is up to some Doom stuff that will be revealed later. Except now it sure looks like he's got a bunch of Doom-flavored like green looking sentinels on standby. So as if he's anticipating mutant attack, you know, this can't be good. So I'm really looking forward to the next issue. I had some stray thoughts. Like it's funny how back in the original Civil War comic, Reed just really believes in the government and going along with the government. And this is what all reasonable people should do. But when it's his kid, he doesn't go through any official channels or anything doesn't even try to do things the right way. Instead, he causes an international incident because he can. And another thing, this Dr. Doom doesn't quite reconcile with the Doom from the current Dr. Doom comic. I mean, he's supposed to be on the run from the entire world, right? I mean, here he's just relaxing. And in that Doom comic, he's not like the all-prepared, you know, master plan Doom. He's kind of like, oh, God, I'm in trouble. Somebody help me which is kind of weird, and here he's kind of the doom that I expect, the one who is always in control. So this is kind of like the the right hand of Marvel doesn't know what the left hand is doing or, or something. Nobody's paying attention to that. Uh, another thought I, is that Terry Dodson, really good at drawing that stank look on Sue's face. I mean, if that really pops off the page. You can really tell that she's in a pissy mood all the time. And... Uh, and uh, that reminds me, is there no way to detect invisible people on Krakoa? I know Reed made these size shields, and I'm sure they're the best size shields ever. But seriously, between the Beast and Forge, together they can't be the equal of Reed? Why do they keep getting caught flat-footed by size shielding and all kind of stuff? Shouldn't the X-Men have anti size shielding tech by now? You think Xavier could get around this stuff? And finally, um, Kitty's whole group was depowered by doom and it just seems like depowering mutants is the easiest thing in the world now and uh it reminded me of that old apple commercial you know there's an app for that doom's probably like okay i got Iceman, i got a fire guy uh, I, I met storm before i'll just press these buttons okay i'll shut these guys down you think that the x-men would be able to circumvent or, or block these mutant blocking um dampeners or whatever they are but they never can. They always get caught flat-footed. Either way, those are just some straight thoughts. But this is really uh, a good comic that I enjoy. I look forward to it. And I have to admit, probably 50% of it is because I, I do like dumping on the Fantastic Four. But um, I have to say that 
it's exciting. I think that this is going to have some lasting ramifications. Sometimes these miniseries don't have any kind of uh, ramifications or any kind of long-lasting effects, but this time I think we're going to see something. Uh, when it comes to Franklin, I don't think that it can be uh, something they just forget about. So, and clearly Xavier is up to something, so I'd like to see what that is. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to part three, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Let me know what you thought, and uh, if, if, you, if you agree, disagree, uh, and I'll catch up with you guys next time.